Hello guys, and we will be doing a new game to our channel called Getting Over It. And, um, in this game, you are a person stuck inside of a pot, I guess, and you use this hammer to move around. Oh yeah, and this game can is pretty hard. I can't get around this. I guess I'll just launch myself up. Mm. Nope, messed that up. Launch. Oh my gosh. It won't work. Ooh. I gotta like have to like launch it up at an angle Whoop. where it moves. Uh, like that. Mm. Oh wow. There's no feeling more intense than starting over. If you deleted your homework the day before it was due, as I have, or if you left your wallet at home and you have to go back after spending an hour in the commute, if you won some money at the casino and then put all your winnings on red but it came up black, if you got your best shirt dry cleaned before a wedding and then immediately dropped food on it, if you won an argument with a friend and then later discovered okay, um, that they just returned to their original uh, view, starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, like if you've already had a bad day, then what you're about to go through might be too much. Feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. All right, thanks for coming with me on this trip. I'll understand if you have to take a break at any point. Just find a safe place to stop and quit the game. Don't worry, I'll save your progress always, even your mistakes. This game is a homage to a free game that came out in 2002, titled Sexy Hiking. The author of that game was Jazuo, a mysterious Czech designer who was known at the time as the father of B games. And B games are rough assemblages of found objects. Designers slap them together very quickly and freely, and they're often too rough and unfriendly to gain much of a following. They're built more for the joy of building them than as polished products. Now, I just need to. In a certain way, Sexy Hiking is the perfect embodiment of a bee game. It's built almost entirely out of found okay, and recycled parts, and it's one no. of the most unusual and unfriendly oh. games of its time. In it, your task is simply to drag yourself up a mountain with a hammer. And that act of climbing well, no, in the digital right world or in real life has certain essential properties it. that give the game its flavor. Now I need to no amount of forward progress is guaranteed. Some cliffs are too sheer or too slippery. And the player is constantly, unremittingly in danger of falling and losing everything. Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Anyway, when you start sexy hiking, you're standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. It might take you an hour to get over that tree, and a lot of people never got past it. You prod and you poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach and your strength trying to find a way up and over. Now, and there's a sense of truth in that lack right of compromise. Here. Most obstacles in video game worlds are fake. You can be completely confident in your ability to get through them once you have the correct method or the correct equipment or just by spending enough time. No, in that sense, every pixelated obstacle in sexy hiking is real. Oh, no. The obstacles in sexy hiking are unyielding. And, and that makes the game unique just and frustrating. Like that, I just felt but I'm not sure Jazuo intended to make a frustrating Yay. game. The frustration is just essential to the act of climbing, mm. and it's authentic to the process yep. of building this a game about this climbing. Game is pretty much a funny thing happened to me as I was parts. building this mountain. I'd have an idea for a oh, new obstacle, and I'd build it, test it, and it would usually turn out to be unreasonably hard. But I couldn't bring myself to make it easier. It already felt like my inability to get past the new obstacle was my fault, as a player, rather than as a builder. Imaginary mountains build themselves from our efforts to climb that them. And it's our repeated attempts to reach the summit that turns those mountains into something now. real. Whoop. Okay, now you go up to the bathroom stall, up these rocks. <clears throat> No, I need to redo that. Go up this. 
the world's fastest <clears throat> um run is like six minutes. I have no idea how they do that. You have to go up like in space to complete it. I'm just trying to bounce around. I need to uh, latch on. Whoa. Then launch. Oh. Ah. Did it. No, no. Oh. Now. Whoa. Come on. No, red ladder. Come on. I mean, that's not a ladder. That's just like pieces of metal. This game is really frustrating sometimes. Just like that whenever I fell off the edge to the almost very beginning. This part is very challenging. I need to launch myself up again. No. Why this game? Do it slow and steady. This game looks easier than it is. Slowly make my way up. No! No! No, no, no! And oh, you just lost a lot of progress. I just That's a deep frustration. A a real again. punch in the gut. Wow, okay, that was a punch in the gut. Like that, I made it back up. <sighs> Do not fall <clears throat> off for the third time. I fell off two times already. <clears throat> when you're building a video game world, you're building with ideas. Now, how do I do this? And that can be like working with quickset cement. You mold your ideas into a certain shape that can be played with. And in the process of playing with them, they begin to harden and set until they're immutable, like rock. And at that point, you can't change the world. Not without breaking it into pieces and starting fresh with new ideas. No, I should have stayed there and tried to... Oh, okay, now I'm back. Okay, guys, that was it for part one of getting over it if this video hits um six likes or five five or six likes then i will make a part two or maybe i'll make one anyways see you next time bye